coming up on Bondi Rescue. A surprise visit hey, what's up, Bondi Rescue? gives lifeguards a little more manpower than they can handle. It was a sus moment. A colourful local held down for his own safety. Lifeguards share the heartache. I, I'm a wreck. All hands on deck for a mass rescue. I think he's calling you in. But then there's a new problem. Are you putting your, Is that a shark alarm? And Singlets gets uninvited company on the way to a rescue. Bondi Beach, a kilometre-long stage where life is an all-day show. From tragic to comic, playful oh, oh, oh. to disturbing, performers come from all over the world, but Bondi has a resident ensemble cast as well. Cora is an amateur muso who has immortalised the lifeguards in song. Hoppo is the king, ring a ding ding Silky and Bush are a born and bred double act. Multiculturalism, great. Right? They're yeah. big fans of the Brazilian fashion in uh, bikini fashion. That's pretty important to our, especially as you get older. Uh, that's pretty important for us. What Morris Having to... said that, my mum was one of the first top of Sunday that's yes. down here. And he used to cry about it. Yeah. And Mick, who rarely speaks, preferring instead to let his Speedos do the talking. And he's got the same, he's got the same undies on. All he does is just come down and run laps to the beach all day, every day. Yeah, we're quite familiar with Mick. He's sporting a different hairstyle every day, and, you know, he's not the kind of guy you can miss easily. Mick's only happy when he wears his tidy whities King, you should get out there in a pair of white undies and run a few laps with him. <laughs> Today, a new act has hit the stage. All right, you ready? Well, you Thank you <laughs> I love that. In town from Las Vegas, Australia's very own manpower are the world's number one all-male dance review. They're in Bondi for a photo shoot. <laughs> but want to meet another bunch of blokes who are also famous for taking their shirts off, just for very different reasons. Myself and Jeff were over in the tower. There um, wasn't much going on. We got a knock on the door. Hey, what's up, Bondi hey, Rescue? Nice. About eight big dudes with their shirts off. Turned out to be manpower. Best view in the house. How's it going, mate? Yeah. How's it going, oh, manpower, yeah. It was a sus moment. <laughs> Jethro isn't rushing to lay down the welcome mat. It's a pretty small room, right? When there's like 10 enormous blokes in there, it fills up a lot of space. And every time I turn around and look at them, they were right, right up in my grill, mate. And I was just like far out. I felt like a little 14-year-old boy next to them. We're actually going to be recruiting for some guys if we want to... Mate, he's young and ready to go. Like, yeah. I've, I've been around, like, you don't like my old flesh, but he's young and you can yeah. manipulate him oh, or whatever you want. I think the girls would love that. At one point, they even said, get your shirt off, and I was thinking, nah, mate, not even nearly. <laughs> Seeing Jethro's unease at the wall of rippling man flesh, Mouse breaks the tension. You know, you shouldn't go down to the buggy yeah. and then curb off the boss. He's, he's, the right he's probably got the best rig out of all of us. <laughs> and he's like, so if I jumped in my undies right now and ran down there and asked for a tube, oh, would they give it? He would be so stoked. He'd be he would be so stoked to see you <laughs> in your oh, undies in front of him. Yeah, take it off, take it off. Get those binoculars when you I want to look like a lifeguard, so someone gets some issues. Instantly, one of the manpower guys just stripped down into his underwear and just bolted down to curb box's rhino and put it on him. It was classic. Please get there in time. <laughs> Please get there in time. <laughs> who's on patrol with Harrison, isn't expecting any visitors. I thought that he would just, like, wig out and not handle it very well. Oh, uh, which one of you guys was Kerbox? Yeah, mate. Oh, you, you're the man. I heard you're the man. <laughs> so just telling me uh, you got all the training tips and you know everything about this place. <laughs> give me some swimming lessons, I'll give you some dancing lessons. Hey, we're training right out. Kerbox is our newest member. <laughs> like Australia right here upon my beach. Back in the day, Kerbox could have easily been a manpower guy. Like, I remember when I was a young bloke down, down Bronny growing up, he was buff, he had long hair, he was a lord. And 2016, he's, he's, he's not making manpower, that's for sure.
Pleasure, mate. All in all, it was a bit overwhelming having like 10 half nude dudes in the tower, but um, it was all good, you know. Kerbox got stitched up and he enjoyed it, and the boys are really good blokes. They turned out to be legends, so it was all good. Bondi's stage is never short of performers. But lifeguards focus their attention on life's real dramas. It was a really steamy hot day. You just know, hot day, something's going to happen. So I headed down to the northern end of the beach and out of the corner of my eye, I see a guy fitting and he's literally... I seen him falling. Yeah, guys, come down north. I've got the under homeless bloke. He's having a fit down here. I better go. Yeah. I knew, I knew it was going to be really difficult. I had to get back up. Just remember that thought of, oh, no. Mick, the jogger notorious for his white speedos, is having a seizure at the north end. He's still breathing, but he's unconscious. Yeah, copy, mate. So I'm getting an ammo. Harry's is already there. Uh, Luke's gone down as well. Oh, and Jesse's there. We're lucky, we've got an ambulance parked across the road um, out the front of Bondi Surf Club. So we're going to try and see if we can get those guys to attend. I saw them there earlier having a coffee and then, yeah, we're really lucky because they're attending. They're right here. Hey, guys. Hello, buddy. How are you feeling? It's the ambulance. We got the paramedics down and then it just pretty much snowballed from there. So next we're going to get the spine board in behind him. Yeah, we'll see how we go. Mick well known for avoiding human contact, is about to find himself surrounded by half a dozen people as soon as he regains consciousness. Who's going to lift like count of three. I knew he was going to be hypoxic when he woke up. It's lack of oxygen to the brain. And I knew all hell was going to break loose. Help! Help me! Mick, a local identity known for avoiding contact with people, has had a seizure at North Bondi. I knew that he was going to be hypoxic coming out of that fit, and I knew all hell was going to break loose, and it did. Chris! Mick is disoriented from hypoxia, a lack of oxygen to the brain. I tell you, stop it! He needs to be examined by doctors. Lifeguards restrain Mick while paramedics administer a sedative. It must have been pretty hard for Mick because we had him strapped to the spinal board. Even with five lifeguards and two AMBO officers, we were struggling to, to keep him down. We're trying to help you. Help, please! Promise we're trying to help you, mate. Please, it's extremely upsetting to see someone like Mick in pain. And I felt like we were inflicting the pain to a degree. Eventually, Mick is sedated and can be transported to the ambulance for further medical care. I count of three. One, two, three, let's go. No, we do. A lot of rescues with people you don't know. And, you know, mix a character that we see every day. Lifeguarding is emotionally taxing. Even more so when the lifeguards are dealing with someone they know. I need to sit out. <laughs> need to get me breath back. It's very physical. And it's, and it's emotional too, you know, so I, I'm a wreck. I, you don't get it out of me much, but that was full on. I don't really know Mick personally. I only know him from seeing him run the beach every day. And uh, yeah, emotionally, it, it does affect you a bit more than the normal. It's got to me for sure. Um, you know, it's just something that we've got to deal with down here, you know. We've just got to get through the rest of the day now. It's only 10 o'clock in the morning, so fingers crossed nothing else happens. Professional lifeguards patrol Bondi 365 days a year. On weekends in the busy summer months, volunteer lifesavers also patrol the beach. The clubbies are invaluable. You can't say no to 40 extra lifesavers on a beach. It's an invaluable resource. Chris is monitoring the north end when a problem develops further up the beach. Hey, mate, Chris, if you could just come down to two heads, just sort of midway out. All of a sudden, the uh, north side really started pulling. You know, the change of tides, it was getting deeper. Guys, I need you to come back to way step. Chris leaves volunteer lifesavers to manage the situation. Suddenly, more and more people are in trouble. Yeah, it's your attention, swimmers. 
Tom is quickly overwhelmed. I had probably three or four on the front of my board, followed by a number of other people out in the water who were able to help. The temptation is to run in, but Chris wisely manages the situation from shore. We had to ask the clubbies to help us out. Just getting another three clubbies in the board. There would have been ten boards at least, you know. We had guys, just surf club guys who were training, helping us out. Tom prioritises the worst swimmers. Straight to those guys there, please. Those three there. Over to your right. Eventually, more firepower is needed. Tom's out there, mate. I think he's calling you in. With no board around, I had to grab a lifesavers board. So I grabbed that and went on out. Yeah, Chris is on a clubby board. Tom risks being overwhelmed by panicked swimmers. Can you let go, please? Uh, uh, Chris, Chris, can you take this guy? Lifeguards and volunteer surf club members work side by side to stabilise the situation. Bobby, the boys have got it under control down there now. They just all sort of went in at, at once. Just when it feels like the situation is in hand, lifeguards are alerted to a new emergency. Are you putting your, is that a shark alarm? Lifeguards and volunteer lifesavers are bringing a mass rescue under control when a new alert rings out. Are you putting your, is that a shark alarm? Yeah, um, I thought, uh, Jake, I just heard the shark alarm go off. Yeah. What are you, what are you guys doing down there? In extreme and very rare circumstances, the shark alarm will be used to clear swimmers from the water. We know that as trained lifeguards, that means mass rescue, but the general public think it's a shark. None of them know it's mass rescue. The alarm has been sounded by volunteer lifesavers. The lifeguards, who have duty of care at Bondi, weren't given prior warning. Before you guys do that, you've got to tell us. Because I know, I know what you're trying to do, but it does, it just causes panic. We, we've got it under control now, and I thanks to, to everyone that's involved, but as soon as people start hearing the shark alarm, like, it, look, we've got surfers and everyone paddling in now, so it's just, it, it makes matters worse. There was really no need for it, and half the people thought there was a shark. The result is what matters, and a combined effort by lifeguards and volunteers has saved dozens of lives. With the change of tide, there was enough pull where if you weren't a strong swimmer, you would get pulled off. And once people lose their footing, they start panicking a little bit. And when people really panic, then you can, they can drown in, in bathtubs. So you've got to be right on top of it. Lifeguard's core job is performing rescues, but they also enforce rules. Now no fiberglass surfboards at the north end of the beach. No dogs, no alcohol, and no windsurfers. It's just too dangerous. We get too many people in the bay here. We just can't have a windsurfer out here and it's out of control. And if that runs someone over, it's slicing in half. Volunteers direct the man to shore. But he doesn't want to take no for an answer. I can't just go once and then stay at the back and that's it. You no, won't see me. can't let you go out and not let other people go out, you know? Yeah, sure, sure. Doesn't matter what you do, people know what the inherent risks are, but he's not worried about anyone else, he's worried about his time at Bondi. Francois hopes lifeguards will give him special treatment just for today. It's his mate. It's mate Bruce there today. Oh, happy birthday. I'm so, I'm so, I'm so sorry. Birthday, oh. It feels like we've eaten his cake on his birthday and we've definitely blowing his candles out. Ten minutes later, and Francois tries another tack with lifeguards. <laughs> if I just go at the back and stay at the back just for once, you know, just, just one shot, it's going to take me 20 seconds. Yeah. And stay at the back the whole time for one hour and come back, and that's fine. Every entry and exit point along the, the uh, coast here, yeah. it has a sign which says no kites. It's not the kite. The kite they, 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 they come under the same stipulation. It's extremely different. Yes. That's what people need to know. I gave him another place to go. I said, you can enter and exit from the boat ramp at the northern end of the beach. You know, you can head out to sea and do your windsurfing. 
Yeah, that could be our case. Happy birthday, Happy birthday. <laughs> Harry's has been on the beach for too long to believe he's seen the last of Francois. Murphy's Law. You give them an inch, they're always going to take it a mile. Sneaking past lifeguards and into the water, Francois has worn out his welcome. I hate being a stiff, but every now and again we'll have a hero that'll wait for us to go back into the tower and go out there and, yeah, this guy on this day tried to do this. As he reaches the south end, Francois comes off his board. He's very lucky he didn't hurt himself then. If he ended up on the rocks, this thing weighs a ton. I would have would hammered him. It's too difficult to come back from the boat ramp. Yeah, yeah you came so too lucky close. Get hurt, then if you got washed into the rock, yeah. if respect us, we'll respect you. Thanks. All right, see ya, bye. It's just respect, you know? He was told to stay way out past the waves, and, uh, yeah, he just comes straight in, and, uh, yeah, just nearly got washed up on the rocks at the iceberg. So, yeah, it's, we'll call it a day for him. Working as a lifeguard, encounters with wildlife are common. Yates, he picked up a hitchhiking fish on the way to a rescue. <laughs> Dino and Harry's got up close and personal with a wobbygong shark in the kids' pool. Yeah, hold on, little fella, we're trying to help you. And Jesse met his match with a rat in the skate bowl. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows exactly when, but the next animal encounter is never far away. South end, south end, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the tower, Azza spots a pair of swimmers in trouble. Yeah, go, go to the south end. They've just had a call from some of the Surfers icebergs. Surfers helping someone trouble. on the board. We just had a call from the bergs. These two blokes have just a bit out of their depth, I think. One of them's just started screaming for a surfer to help him, so boys have just gone down to get them. So I jumped in the rhino, and I knew I didn't have a lot of time. This guy was in a really bad way, and I had a fair bit of ground to cover, so I, uh, I hit the gas and, and floored the, the rhino. Jethro noticed me in my haste and joined in as well. I just thought, I'll go with him, and the call came through, yeah, Jeff, back him up. And it was it was pedal to the metal, like, we were going. I pretty much had the rhino going flat stick as fast as it could go, and on the way down, I encountered a flock of seagulls, and uh, I couldn't really break or anything. Singlets has gone straight through the guts of a, of a flock of seagulls. At least one of them flew in the rhino and hit me on the chest and landed in the seat. South End, go. Singlets and Jethro are racing to a rescue in the South End when there's an unexpected problem. Singlets has gone straight through the guts of a, of a flock of seagulls. At least one of them flew in the rhino and hit me on the chest. And I've got my eye on the patient down south as well and I couldn't stop and had this seagull in the passenger seat and the whole thing was just really weird for me so I just kept driving. I got down to the patient and unloaded the board and the seagull had fallen out of the seat, so I don't know where it had gone at that stage, but like I said, my priority was this patient because he was going under. I think one of them's almost got washed in, but one's still clinging to the surfer's board like he's going to die. Jethro reaches the first man. There you go. Oh, Jethro's been brushed. Good. Thanks, Jethro. Singlets heads for the second man who has been saved by a surfer. He was kind of really relieved to see me, a Colombian guy, really out of breath and looked like he was probably on his last couple of strokes. All good. Folsom's got his blade and Jethro's just got, got wet. With both men safe, Singlets turns his attention back to the seagull. When we got out, Singo said to me, mate, I killed a seagull. And it was like he murdered a human. He was so rattled. Yeah, it's pretty out of shape, isn't it? He said, Jeff, mate, he was in the passenger seat. I hit it and it was in the passenger seat and he, he looked like he was about to cry, man. <laughs> I feel bad, but there was not really much I could do. I was just like, oh no, this can't be real, you know? Especially, you know, we spend so much time on the beach with these seagulls, they're like our buddies, you know? We thought we better pay all due respect, you know? He was just sitting on the sand and we sort of cut its life a little bit short. We thought, you know what, we'll... We'll do the good thing and we'll, we'll bury it. And we'll give a little ceremony and a couple of words and send him off. <laughs> yeah, I think the seagull's gone to a better place and, uh, yeah, definitely sort of buried him on the beach. Where else would he want to be? 
But as one Bondi resident is put to rest, Look who's here. another one is back on his feet. Mick, the reclusive jogger who collapsed on the beach, has come to thank the lifeguards. You're good? Nothing there, nothing there. Blood, blood tests okay, x-rays okay. Mate, I'm just stoked that you're all right. I was a bit worried yeah. about you. How do you feel now? Are you tired? Uh, a little, a bit groggy. I feel like going for another run. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, do, us, do us all a favour and don't do that. <laughs> I honestly didn't think Mick could speak like that. It was very bizarre how much he was onto it and knew what was going on, and yeah, it was very weird. I was diagnosed with temporal, temporal lobe epilepsy about 30 years ago, but I've had a few tests since that time, and they say there's nothing there. He was really talkative and really coherent and uh, really sharp. That's the most we've ever heard Mick talk to us. Yeah, all right, well, I'll get out of here. I'll go up there now. All right, cheers, Mick. Thanks, mate. Thanks, you're all right. Thanks for everything. Uh, yeah. You will be rewarded. Ah, cheers, buddy. Thank you. How yeah, it was that? It's really nice to see that he'd come back, not only to say hello and, and thanks for treating him, but just to see that he was in a good place and he was well. That's the first time I've ever heard him talk. Like, yeah, I've had a few, like, like, like conversations with him, but yeah. I didn't know that he could speak like that. That's just he's been out. So, Next time on Bondi Rescue. Happy New Year! Bondi's 24-hour party people hey, 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 aren't the only ones experiencing New Year's Day headaches. Get on. Drugs, alcohol and risk-takers overwhelm the lifeguards. You're getting angry. And it's not just the equipment which is at breaking point. Are you going to be an idiot or are you going to like try and see? Nothing, mate. What?